There are moments in each of our lives where everything seems to change. These turning points that appear as though a new era is beginning. Navigating these moments in motherhood can be complex and challenging, but it can also be such an opportunity to reflect on the way that things have been and the way that you want things to be moving forward. I am in one of these moments in my life, and I am here to share with you how I am embracing this new era in my life and motherhood. Welcome to Worthy Mother Podcast. I'm your host, Emily Hardy, a mom of two on a mission to help moms everywhere feel less alone. This is not a parenting podcast. Instead, it's a space for pushing back against societal expectations of perfection and embracing self-compassion in your motherhood journey. Let's get into it. All right, welcome to a Worthy Mother podcast. This is going to be a bit of a personal episode, maybe a little bit vulnerable. I shared in last week's episode with guest Jess Evans that I am going through a divorce currently. And while I don't feel like I need to share all the details of that, at least at this point, I recognize that I am in the middle of this moment of time where things in my life are changing in big ways. All of this is happening right coinciding with my 30th birthday turn 30 towards the end of October. So by the time this episode comes out, I will be in this new decade of my life. And there's an opportunity here for me to really reflect on what that means for me, what this new era, so to speak, looks like, what it can look like, what opportunity exists out there, what possibilities exist out there for me. In motherhood, it's so easy to get kind of swept up in the day-to-day because there's just so much happening all the time, right? We're trying to keep up with appointments, soccer practice, making sure the kids are getting what they need from us, making sure we are also getting what we need for us, balancing our relationships, all these things. We talk about it a lot here, but it can be hard to like stop and reflect on what do I actually want? What's important to me? Why is that what's important to me? How do I make that apparent in my life, the way that I'm actually going about living? And going through something like having a divorce, separating from a partner of over a decade has really caused me to pause and take a moment and think about like, what do I want this next decade to look like? What do I want the next year to look like, right? How do I want to move forward in motherhood? How do I want to move forward as an individual? And while I absolutely do not have it all figured out at this point, and I have a feeling it will be a while until I feel like I have it all figured out because it's a lot of things to think about, right? I want to share a little bit about what I've been going through and how I've been accepting the moment and really trying to embrace this new era in my life. Because I think it's important to acknowledge that multiple things can be true at once. You can be grieving something and feeling deep sadness about something while also embracing the moment and looking forward to all the opportunity, all the possibility that is on the horizon potentially, right? So I want to take this episode to just talk about how I'm embracing this moment. I feel like I am on a mountain overlooking my 30s. I have this whole new decade. It's so symbolic. Obviously, to have transformation and turn a corner in life it doesn't have to happen on a birthday or at the start of a new decade of your life. But I've been really leaning into the fact that all of this is happening surrounding that because it's given me the space to really like look and say, look, I can look back on my 20s and appreciate what went down in my 20s and the fact that I have these two beautiful sons and was able to travel so much, you know, got through the COVID pandemic, all these things. I can look back on that as this decade and then look ahead at what is to come, all the opportunity, again, all the possibility that exists. And I'm going to talk about how there's kind of these two pieces. There's the navigating the logistics of what's actually happening, how my life is going to change moving forward. And then also the identity piece of it, which is huge as somebody who was in a relationship since I was literally 17 and have grown so much in that period of time, right? As I'm turning 30, I'm a completely different person in so many ways. I have this fresh start to kind of get to know who I am in a different way outside of my relationship. That work isn't just starting now. That's something that I have been on a journey for over the past however many years. That's really a part of the work that I'm doing. It's part of what I share with moms. It's really important to talk about how we cultivate and embrace and figure out our own identities. But I recognize this moment in time as something that can allow me to do that in an even deeper, more meaningful way. Because again, I am completely stepping out of this relationship that I've been in for so long that has been a part of my identity. 
So to the logistics side of things, again, last week I talked with Jess Evans about divorce. We talked a lot about co-parenting. She is a divorce coach and supports her clients in navigating divorce with kids in mind. For me, the logistics of like co-parenting and finances and schedules and the house and all these different pieces has been incredibly stressful. When you're going through something like this, it's like there's the emotional piece of it. There's so much emotion. There's so much going on internally, but there's these logistics. Something like a divorce can like flip everything on its head, right? And I've been really fortunate to have support in all of that. And, you know, I think we're handling it really well and things have not been as, I guess, bad as they could be. Things have been pretty good. We've been figuring things out, taking our time to do that. We are having great communication in doing that. And so I feel good about it all for the most part, right? However, having said that, this new era of my life looks a lot different in terms of my own responsibility for myself and my kids. It's such a difference than having a partner who you are making all decisions with. We're still making decisions for our kids together, but the decisions about me and how I move through the world really now fall on me alone. And that's a complete different dynamic than it has been. And I have a lot of room for growth in that, the logistics of everything. And so I have to recognize that part of the growth that I will be doing over the next few years is really anchored in the fact that I not only will be having to understand myself as this individual in terms of identity, but it's also in terms of like living and sustaining the living environment and making sure everything's taken care of, like that's going to fall on me in a different way than it has before when I was partnered and, you know, had somebody who I was doing all that alongside. And then it's again, like the whole co-parenting thing, figuring out that new dynamic, this new relationship, managing the relationship with my children in that way, which I'm not super worried about. I think that when I look at the way things have been in this transition, I know that my kids are going to be okay. I know that they're going to come out of this just fine. We're all going to be good. This is the best way forward for our whole family. But it is like this new dynamic that will have to be juggled, right? It's the reality of the situation. And so the logistics of that, it's a lot to handle. And there's a lot of decisions to be made. And decisions can be overwhelming. So what that looks like in this new era of my life, I don't quite know yet. And there's a lot of room for growth. But then on the other side of things, there's this whole piece of identity and understanding who I am outside of my relationship and outside of my role as a mother in a lot of ways. As I said, it's not uncommon for moms to kind of get swept up in things and not take those moments periodically to reflect on who they are and whether they're living life aligned with who they are deep in their core. Having such a drastic kind of blow to this identity that I developed over the past decade has really forced me to do that work in a different way of stopping and saying, what do I want? Even just like my kids not being with me 50% of the time and having that 50% of the time where I'm not so much on mom duty. I'm not the default parent in those moments. I'm not actively responsible for my children as like the one who's there. What that looks like, what that means, I'm still not sure what that looks like and what that means. Who am I in those moments? And while that's kind of like a daunting, scary ask, really getting into that and questioning it, it's also exciting. And as somebody who preaches that as moms, we need to take the time for ourselves, we need to pour into ourselves, we need to really stop and get to know ourselves and who we are on that deeper level, I really am trying to embrace the gratitude that I have for the fact that I will have different types of time to do that now. I will have a lot more space to really tune into me, what I want who I want to be surrounded by, and what I want my life to look like, where I'm not just being distracted by the noise of my kids being around or like having to be the parent who's always, always, always on. Now, I want to say with that, that I'm not saying that to be able to have that moment to pause, you have to go through a divorce. I think the divorce and the fact that we are co-parenting 50-50 I have to acknowledge and embrace with gratitude the opportunity that it gives me. That's really the only way that I can accept it fully 
And so I do want to just say that because it's like, there's also things about it that really, really suck. And I have a lot of feelings about it, but I know that it's okay to lean into that gratitude. It's okay for me to say, you know what? There's so much opportunity for me in this. And if you don't have that extra space, if you are somebody who is not going through a divorce or you're not a single parent, or maybe you are a single parent, but not co-parenting 50-50 and you're in charge of everything, that doesn't mean there can't be a new era of really tuning into and tapping into yourself. It just might look different. For me, it's kind of this forced moment. I have been trying to figure out how to spend that time. A lot of times I'm working, I work from home and my schedule is pretty flexible. And, you know, I do a lot of creative work. And sometimes when the kids aren't here, I'm just doing that work later in the evening and figuring out the new boundaries around when I work, when I don't work, what I want that to look like. Because again, it's like all transforming. But I've also been trying to spend time doing things with people, tapping into experiences that I want to have, knowing that I have more time to say yes to things now. I do want to talk a little bit more explicitly about how I am tapping into this moment and embracing this new era when it comes to the way I am really focusing on my own identity and developing that for myself. So there's a few different ways I've been doing this, and I'm going to talk about the things that I'm actively doing and the things that I'm aware that I want to be doing more. And I hope, again, that this can help anybody who is in a moment where they are like ready for something. I'm ready for a transformation, for something different, that this can help you kind of see the approach that I'm taking to that. And maybe there's something in there where you're like, that makes a lot of sense. That's a great way to approach this. That's something I should try. Therapy has been huge. I found a therapist who is a great support in the specific kind of situation I'm going through. She's been somebody that I can talk to about all of these things. And I feel supported in that. I feel like I have been given the space in therapy to explore like on a deeper level, all the intricate feelings, admit the things where I'm excited, admit the things where I'm sad and grieving, admit the things where it's like a mashup of everything and there's frustration and fear and anger and hopefulness. When you find a therapist who is aligned and that you just kind of vibe with and they are able to help you tap into those parts of yourself, it can be huge and just anchoring into who you are, knowing that you don't have to have it all figured out. And so that's been huge. And I would say right now, that's kind of a number one thing is that I've prioritized that for myself. I know that I need that support. I know that I need somebody consistent that is going to be able to help me navigate and really think through and talk through a lot of the just different things that are happening because there's a lot happening. There's a lot shifting. It's ever evolving every week. So that's been huge. Another thing I've been really trying to do and have been successful at doing is spending more time with family and friends and really pouring into those relationships. I'm trying to get out and do things that are fun. I've been going to like bingo at a brewery with my sister or getting sushi with some friends, going and watching live music with my kids and some of their friends' families, just really trying to say yes to more that includes connection with others because I know how important connecting with others is to me. And I know how important my relationships are to me. I did an episode a couple months ago about how to support yourself in seasons of struggles. And I talked about both these things, the therapy and the connecting with others really pouring into that. I recognize how important cultivating and pouring into those relationships has been for my identity because it gives me the space to really talk through how I'm feeling figure out like what I want, who I want to be surrounded by in life. And then we're like doing things sometimes that I'm like, oh, I really enjoy this. I want more of this. I want more of this like chatting with friends at a brewery playing a game. Or I want more of this like getting outside listening to live music vibes, right? I'm learning about myself through these experiences that I'm saying yes to. Having more time where I can say yes without having to think about what I'm doing with my kids because they're with dad has been huge in that because I'm able to really look at and prioritize my time and say, yeah, I don't have anything that I'm responsible for Wednesday night. So yeah, I can go out and get sushi with a friend. Like I'm able to better understand what I can and can't do. I'm still learning what those boundaries look like, learning when I want to say yes and when I want to say no, but I'm approaching it with a sense of like, I'm learning these things. And so that's been really exciting and challenging, but there's just so much value we can get from connections with other people. And I am grateful to have friends that I've been able to say, you know what, I'm going to be leaning on you more in this time. And they show up and not everybody does. Not everybody shows up for you in the way that you hope they would. But when you can find those people that you connect with and want to spend time with who are willing to be there on the journey of you figuring it all out, 
It's beautiful. One of the things that I have not been doing such a fantastic job about, but it also has to do with the dynamics of where we're at right now in co-parenting and moving things along in terms of the kids living in two houses. I have not been getting enough time that is intentionally spent by myself. At this point, pretty much all of the time that I'm by myself, I am working or taking care of things. A lot of the times when I don't have my kids, I'm with people because again of our housing situation and what's going on in that transition, I won't get into it. But like I'm with people a lot, staying at family's houses or, you know, spending time outside of the house while their dad is home. And this is temporary. It's going to shift. But goodness, there's been things where I'm like, I really need to like sit and listen to a sad song and just like cry about this and like get it out. And I have not had the time or space to do that alone. Like I have time, but it's not alone time in my home where I'm comfortable to just really let it out in that way. There's so much to be said about allowing ourselves to process things as a means of tuning into our true identities because we can really get to the bottom of what's going on. And when we like release emotions and tension inside of ourselves, it brings us to a better place of alignment where we can then understand like what it is that we actually want. We're not making decisions from a place of grief or from a place of fear because we've processed more. We can make decisions based on what we actually want. So that is something that I know I want to prioritize in this new era of my life. I want to prioritize really being intentional with the way that I am giving myself time to process things and making sure I have that time alone to do things that I want to do to engage in like mindless hobbies sometimes. It doesn't look like that right now, but again, it's that possibility, the opportunity. And I know that as things settle out, as we get into the more permanent dynamic of what it's going to look like and how the kids will be in two different homes, it's going to make a lot more sense. And just knowing that that's a priority is great because when it comes to really finalizing or maybe not finalizing, but exploring what it'll look like in the final form at this stage, I will know that that's something I want to make time for. And so I will. (laughs) Another little piece of like how I'm trying to tap into my identity is just understanding my style, understanding how I want to appear to the world. You know, I've been playing with my makeup. I'm not going to lie. I've been spending time on TikTok kind of seeing what women wear that are my age and like how they look cute and how they're embracing their youth still. I'm really trying to like tap into and figure out how I want to dress, how I want to show up in the world. What do I look like as a single 30 year old woman who's a mom? Like this is new for me. So I'm giving myself the space to like ask those questions and to like really ponder how do I want to appear? What does this mean for me? And that goes for so many other things, right? Like how do I want to hold myself in conversation with people, with other single people, with other single parents, with families where there's partnered people? Like how do I navigate those conversations? Who am I in those conversations? How am I kind of introducing myself? How am I explaining my situation when it comes up? What do I want to say? It's been awkward at times because I don't know the answer to a lot of those questions. And so there's been a lot of like grace giving to myself of like, you're going to figure this out along the way. And you're probably going to say weird things. I've said weird things. And I'm like, oh, why is this so awkward? Why can't I figure out how to say this in a way that's not uncomfortable and awkward from here with the other person? But then I do like, I am awkward. I'm kind of awkward sometimes. And I don't hate that about myself. So like, I'm not going to let that stop me from feeling like I can talk about my situation. I can express my situation and I will learn along the way, like how I want others to perceive my situation. I think something that's been interesting is having somebody know what's going on in my life. And then they come to me and they're like, are you okay? And they're asking like, almost trying to get it to be like they're an open book and I can tell them about how sad I am and it's like in moments where I'm not sad I'm like I'm great I'm doing swell right now navigating all of that has been weird and awkward but again there's so much opportunity for me to kind of like I don't want to say shape the narrative because that sounds kind of like eh but it really is like this is my story this is my life this is my identity that we're talking about and i get to like be the teller of that story i'm the narrator of my narration i feel like this is a little bit all over the place but kind of like my life i'm figuring it all out when i thought about doing this episode and kind of lining it up to go along with my birthday and this whole turning 30 thing entering a new decade a new era of my life i questioned how do i want to do this how do i want to package this up How am I going to be honest and vulnerable and also make sure that all of you listening are getting value out of this? 
And I decided, you know what, I think this is one where I just need to kind of speak from the heart. I need to not worry too much about how the episode is set up, how it's structured, and really just share this because I think sometimes it's just the sharing what's going on in that, you know, as they call it, the messy middle. That is valuable. Just giving a look inside. And I hope there's something in here that you can take for your own life, your own journey. You don't need to be entering a new decade of life or going through a divorce to reevaluate who you are and what you want. Although we can use those big moments where there's lots of feelings and lots of change to really pause and be intentional about it. So it's a good way to shift kind of the perspective when we are going through things that might feel weird or uncomfortable or icky to say this is an opportunity for something great, but you don't have to have a moment like that to stop and pause and say, what do I want? Just can be a great catalyst in doing that. I am going to leave this by saying that I am doing really well. I am feeling great. Not every day. There's moments where I'm like really sad and where things feel like too much. There's moments of frustration. There's moments of like, how the hell did I get here? But overall, I'm doing really well. And I am excited and grateful for the possibility and for this new era and this new opportunity to like grow into who I am going to be in my 30s. I'm just soaking in the gratitude that I have for it all. I really appreciate you being here and tuning into this episode, listening to my story. I would love to hear from you if you have been through a transition in your life or maybe you're currently going through something where you're struggling with really understanding and embracing who it is that you want to be. Reach out to me. I'm on Instagram at emily.rose.hardy. I'd love to hear from you. I think that there's so much room for conversation when it comes to kind of redefining who we are, taking moments to reevaluate our identity and move forward accordingly. So definitely send me a DM if you feel so inclined. Also, if you are loving the podcast week after week, I've been so stoked on the episodes we've been having. There's been incredible guests having such valuable, insightful conversations week after week. If you are getting that from the podcast, please do me the biggest favor and leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Tell others what you love about the podcast. Let them know if they are looking for something to listen to. This is a good fit. You can also send the link to other moms in your life. Just get them involved in these conversations. The things that we're talking about week after week matter. They really matter for moms to go out there and live their best life, be who they are without the pressure that so often feels so crippling from society. I'm going to leave it at that. I'll see you next week. You are worthy, mama. 